Uh, hi, hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Auth SDK, or as some of you know it, it's called WebNative before. We renamed this this week. Um, this talk builds on the previous talks of the Fission folks, like um, the Philip uh, did the talk on Winifest this morning. This uh, SDK builds around that. Um, so the current version of the SDK um, has like a prototype of WinFS and UCAN, and this presentation is like talking about RS WinFS and introducing some new new ideas. So what is the Auth SDK? Um, it's a toolkit that allows you to create web applications uh, that allow you to build an offline app uh, without a backend and which is distributed. And it uses all the protocols designed by Fission, um, at which the main one is WinFS. Uh, a WinF uh, Alt SDK app is entirely built around uh, a user's file system. And the second one is uh, the UCAN. Um, without that, we don't have a decentralized authorization. And thirdly, a important non-fusion protocol is DIDs, the identifiers. And in the future, this will also include uh, things like IPVM and uh, uh, NNS probably as well. So a bit more about the file system. Um, it includes at least three partitions. Uh, these are bound together in the root tree, which is a seaboard DAG. Uh, so you have public data, encrypted data, and also like a, a compatibility layer, UnixFS, which allows us to upload uh, apps in the public file system and then viewing those apps in the IPFS gateway. So the user is in full control of their file system. And this includes multiple private files and directories, which are sets of AS keys and name filters. And, and this is the private forest uh, Philip was talking earlier today, or dark forest, as he called it. Um, so this hides the encrypted IPLD blocks um, in a sort of uh, hamped uh, DAC. And that gives us an uh, immutable top level SID. And then we have three important, uh, three crucial parts in total. That's the IPLD blocks, the top level SID, the pointer, and the private credentials. So this shows an example of how those uh, three important pieces uh, could flow around the ecosystem. So on the left, we have a, a file system and an app on a phone, and the same on the right, but on a laptop. And in the middle, there's the protocols, or some of them at least, and some of the fission infrastructure. So when we make a change in the file system on the app, we push the IPLB box to the IPFS node from fission, and then we update the SID and DNS. Um, and then when the laptop is like a new device, it doesn't have the credentials yet to decrypt those private nodes. So then we have to like uh, establish a secure session and that's done using Awake and UCAN. And we can also announce the uh, changes using WebSockets to other active apps. Um, but in order to access the DNS and IPFS nodes, we need some sort of identity or an account. And that's done by registering a, the agent DID from the device you're on. And that will become the, the root DID or account DID. And then we also need a username, which is basically the identifier used for DNS, the subdomain for fission.name subdomain. 
Um, in the current SDK, there's only one type of an account, and that's uh, our first class, first class fusion account, um, which is has like full rights. You can create apps with that. Uh, but in the future, there will also be like an app account, which is tied to one specific app in the Fusion ecosystem. Uh, the IDs are generated using the Web Crypto API, which is either RSA or Edwards Curve. Uh, the Fusion server also has a DID. Um, so every time, like, we contact the Fusion server, for example, when registering a new account, we create a UCAN, and the audience is the DID of the Fusion server. And then when the registration is successful, we get a UCAN proof from the server, uh, which is all just the proof of line that we have in a Fusion account. This is another example why we need a global namespace when doing private file sharing. So we have Alice on the left and Bob. Alice is the uh, sharer of a file and Bob is the receiver. So what happens here is uh, Alice looks up the file system from Bob and then lists all the share keys, which is uh, another type of key, not the one used for U signing UCANs, but for making uh, exchanges. And then we create the share in the uh, sender of the share, and then the file system is updated, like before updating DNS and the IPLD blocks. Then the receiver of the share looks up the new information, and they also get a share ID or counter from the sender of the share using a URL or some other form of gossip. And then using uh, three and four together, we can, we can decrypt the share and the, using the share key on that device. So all of that together um, is organized into components and layers in the SDK. These are some of them. Um, we made it possible to like custom all, customize all of them, so it's easier for testing and adopting to other ecosystems. So for example, you can change uh, how and where the IPLD blocks are stored, um, how to look up DNS records, um, where to store keys, and so on. Um, so yeah, all, this, all of those things fit in components and layers. There's other, other interesting ones like the capability component that allows us to ask other apps for capabilities using UCANs. Um, and those, all those components together form a program um, which is um, what runs in the browser then. Um, then you also have plugins, which are predefined compositions, basically. And they can also have uh, functions that create a program separately from the original SDK implementation. So for example, we have wallet auths that creates a fusion account automatically instead of filling in a form like you usually do in an app, but it connects to a MetaMask and then uses another component to uh, get the root private ref from RunFS, encrypts that using MetaMask and then puts it in the public file system. So you can load it on your other devices. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, that's the result. We get the simple way to create apps without a backend. So for example, here we create a program, uh, we have a user session, and then we write to the file system. I'll try to do a live demo.
So this is the photos on the public file system and a separate private file system. Then you can see here that it makes an update to the Fusion server using a UCAN, which is the, the long token here. It's quite long because of RSA. Um, and then you could decrypt or decode the UCAN using the UCAN map site. And then this is an example from the DNS. When you do a registration, it puts the DID key in DNS. The DNS link is the top level SID of the file system. And then you also have the DID of the Fusion server. Uh, this is an example of an older file system. The current SDK has like a prototype of NFS. And this is how it looks. This is DAGPB instead of Seabor. Uh, but it shows you the uh, public and private file systems and the UNIXFS compatibility layer. And it, yep, that's it. I'll just show uh, device linking. So this is the templates, um, which has a pre-configured UI, and you can use this to like start immediately instead of using the SDK directly to and implement everything manually. And that's it. That's the device link. Now our devices are linked, and we can load the the photos on our phone as well if the connection is fast enough, at least. Uh, but yeah, that was it.